Good afternoon. The next item of business today is a statement by Jean Freeman on NHS Tayside Board. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, so if any members wish to ask a question, I would uh, urge you to press your press request to speak button as soon as possible. And I call on the Cabinet Secretary. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I would like to update the Chamber on developments in the governance of NHS Tayside since the changes to its leadership earlier this year. In April this year, following clear concerns over the Board's service delivery and management of resources, including the Board's use of endowment funds, John Brown and Malcolm Wright were appointed as Acting Chair and Chief Executive of NHS Tayside. Uh, John Brown and Malcolm Wright are two of the most senior experienced leaders in the NHS in Scotland, and their remit was to strengthen the governance and leadership of the Board and improve public and stakeholder confidence. Their first step was to meet with directors, non-executives and clinical leaders to clearly set out their joint and shared aims for improvement and to listen to and respond to concerns about the challenges facing the board and how each could contribute to addressing these and taking the board forward. The principles they set out on that first day of visible leadership, of openness and honesty combined with challenge and accountability have continued to define the priorities pursued over the last five months. The top priority for the new leadership team has been to get a full picture of the situation they were dealing with right across the organisation, to identify priority areas requiring immediate action and to make best use of the assets and resources at their disposal to remedy those. In this, they recognise the enormous contribution that the staff of NHS Tayside make each and every day. Their approach has been underpinned by a need for deep-seated cultural and structural matters to be addressed if delivering reform in the board is to be both effective and sustainable. This is not just about what, what people do, but about how they do it. The chair and the chief executive reviewed all of the findings of external reviews and reports carried out over the previous 18 months and identified five priority areas for focused action providing clear direction, supporting operational leadership, driving service change, improving financial and service performance, and ensuring effective regulation and compliance. An important action by the Chair has been to commission an independent governance review, covering the role of the Board, the role of Board members, the capability and capacity of Board members to deliver against that role, and the effectiveness of the information systems and administrative arrangements necessary to support the board. Given its importance to uh, the NHS, an independent review of inf information governance and cyber security arrangements has also been completed and the Institute of Internal Auditors has reviewed the effectiveness of audit arrangements in Tayside. The Chief Executive has taken decisive action to strengthen his executive leadership team in key areas including finance and human resources as well as rolling out a system that supports staff to make decisions at the most appropriate level. This work has been complemented by the development of a comprehensive performance management system to make performance visible and the lines of accountability clear. Oversight of this work is the responsibility of the Performance and Resources Committee that was introduced to put scrutiny of performance and finance in the same arena. A new clinically-led operational management system has been put in place that puts clinical leaders in the driving seat with devolved budget responsibility. Crucially, this is accompanied by a development programme to ensure they are supported in fulfilling these roles. Clinical leaders are supported by dedicated operational managers which creates a collective responsibility for improving patient care. The establishment of a clinical alliance group has also provided a forum to encourage whole system approaches and the design of innovative solutions that tackle both immediate challenges and longer term reform. The newly appointed strategic director of workforce has set in train a safe, affordable workforce process with the devolution of workforce changes to a local level. In terms of prescribing, highlighted in Sir Lewis Ritchie's report as the other key cost driver in Tayside, a continued and unwavering focus on driving out unwarranted variation and waste is being complemented 
by a public health-led approach aimed at addressing the systemic factors that drive prescribing behaviours and expectations. All of this is necessary, of course, to deliver the kind of sustainable reform envisaged by our Chief Medical Officer in her Realistic Medicine programme. Partnership working is being promoted at every level within the organisation, bringing us back to the point I started with, the importance of openness, honesty and engagement from the internal infrastructure of partnership working to the strengthening of engagement with external stakeholders, including many colleagues in the chamber today. The new leadership team has been at the forefront of the board's response to important issues which have emerged over the last few months, including the recently commissioned independent inquiry into mental health services across the board area. In relation to the management of endowment funds, we have already taken action to further strengthen the governance around this issue to mitigate any risk posed by dual membership. Once the charities regulator, Oscar, completes his independent inquiry into the management of endowment funds in Tayside, the chair and chief executive will also lead on any further action that may be required. The work of the chair in engaging with non-executive directors has led some to choose to stand down as the new leadership team has become embedded, having helped support the transition to the new arrangements. I was advised on Wednesday the 12th of September that three non-executives had intimated their wish to resign from their positions. Both Mr Cross and Mr Hay had initially considered resigning in April of this year when action was taken to change the leadership of NHS Tayside. But following discussion with the acting chair, both decided to remain to assist the new chair and chief executive and to help provide continuity and assist with the review of governance for NHS Tayside. Both have now decided that this is the right time to resign from their role so that fresh non-executive input can be brought onto the board. I am genuinely grateful to them for their commitment and the positive role they have played in providing stability to the board in recent months. A further non-executive, Mr Hussain, has also indicated that he will resign following his current period of sick leave. He has written to me on the 31st of August, I received it on the 3rd of September, on a, matter, a number of matters which I immediately followed up on and have been assured by the chair that these matters raised by Mr Hussain are being properly dealt with. I'm aware that other board members are also considering their future plans in light of the significant work that has been undertaken around the governance of the board and the clarity this has provided on the role of board members in providing challenge and scrutiny and in taking responsibility for doing that. The board will consider a full report of their governance mechanisms at their meeting on the 25th of October. I am in regular contact with John Brown, met him this week, and have received assurance that the work of the board will continue to meet its responsibilities. And he has also confirmed that Trudy McClee, one of the recent non-executive appointments to NHS Tayside, has agreed to be the board's new whistleblowing champion. And I've passed on my thanks to her for taking on that important role. I expect new non-executive appointments to be made early in the new year, following a full value-based appointments process regulated by the Commissioner for Ethical Standards in Public Life for Scotland. In conclusion, Presiding Officer, I will continue to support the new leadership in NHS, Tayside Building for the Future. In addition to agreeing to suspend the repayment of brokerage for three years, I have also agreed to provide additional funding, including support to give clinicians the time to make the commitment to clinically-led change a reality. I am clear that the need for organisation-wide culture change and sustainable recovery in NHS Tayside will require sustained and agile intervention and leadership of the highest calibre. And I want to put on record my thanks to John Brown and Malcolm Wright for the effective and focused work so far and to the staff of NHS Tayside who have engaged with and supported the approach and work necessary to ensure the good and effective governance that is essential to delivering quality, safe healthcare. Thank you very much. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions. Uh, I call Liz Smith to be followed by Anas Sarwar. Liz, oh, sorry, Miles Briggs. Big pardon. Thank you, President Officer. Um, 
Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advanced uh, sight of her statement? And I want to start by sending the message to our NHS staff in Tayside just how much we value them and the work that they do. I know from the many emails, phone calls, letters and conversations I've had with friends of mine who work for NHS Tayside just how low staff morale has fallen in the organisation in recent months and years. And that does nothing for staffing and patient care. From the Cabinet Secretary's statement, Mr Hussein has written to the Cabinet Secretary to identify a number of matters which she says she has felt the need to immediately follow up. What are these matters, Cabinet Secretary? And can I also ask the Cabinet Secretary, given the now imperative need to recruit a long-term leadership team for NHS Tayside, and given the crisis in leadership which we've seen over many years now, will the Cabinet Secretary also agree today for the Health and Sport Committee of this Parliament to be given an additional scrutiny role of these future appointments? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you very much. I thank Mr Briggs for that question and for the support he's offered to NHS Tayside staff. Um, in terms of the matters that Mr Hussein raised with me, they covered doctors in training, uh, prescribing, senior management pay, use of public funds, uh, CAMS issues, uh, and transformation. Uh, all of these matters have been followed up. I will be writing to Mr. Hussain with respect to my response on all of those, but they are all being followed uh, up by the board. Um, in terms, for example, of uh, dosage, the chief executive of NHS Tayside discussed the issue that Mr. Hussain raised with our CMO and our chief pharmacist and a fact-finding review is being conducted by Health Improvement Scotland, which will be followed up by a more wide-ranging review by the Royal College of Physicians in London, which has been commissioned by NHS Tayside itself. Um, in terms of the scrutiny role that you asked for, uh, I uh, believe that the values-based recruitment that we undertake now um, very successfully uh, in some of our boards and now being rolled out for the current round of chief executive appointments uh, is one that provides a significant degree of scrutiny and challenge. Of course, at the end of that process, there are other steps in terms of a chief executive that have to be gone through to ensure that they are a fit person to be the accountable officer uh, before uh, any such recommendations come to me. And in terms of the chair, uh, there is a comparable process that is gone through. I believe that that is right uh, for uh, our board appointments at that very senior leadership level. I'm very happy to keep uh, the Health and uh, Sport Committee uh, appraised of how we are progressing on that matter, but I think we have within uh, our arrangements currently uh, an appropriate and robust level of scrutiny, challenge and check to make sure, uh, particularly through that values-based recruitment, that we secure the best possible senior leadership for our health service in Scotland. I call Anas Sarwar to be followed by Alison Johnson. Anas Sarwar. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for prior sight of her statement. There is a crisis in public confidence with NHS Tayside following a series of issues, including financial mismanagement leading to brokerage loans, raiding of the charity endowment fund, a chief executive and chair forced to resign, the issues at Cars View leading to an independent mental health inquiry, and a failure to suspend a consultant after repeated concerns were raised. Now, the Cabinet Secretary made passing reference to the now formal whistleblowing champion, Munwar Hussain. I have seen the letter Mr Hussain sent to the Cabinet Secretary. In it, he says, on the 27th of June 2018, I received a direct email from an ex-doctor in training who had managed to get my email address, noting that they had left the NHS due to issues of systematic bullying and negative cliques and highlighting this issue for others within the organisation. Further, there were claims that people were raising issues, but these were not being acted upon by managers, including allegations in the email that a previous trainee took their own life and the stress was unbearable for some. A serious set of allegations, including a claim that a trainee took their own life due to stress. He goes on to say that he asked for this to be raised at a board meeting, but was told that he could not. He attempted twice to meet the strategic director of workforce in August, but both times the meetings were cancelled. And he did eventually raise the matter at his staff governance committee, but felt in his words that this is viewed as an ongoing issue that is tolerated. Why does the cabinet secretary feel reassured that this is being adequately dealt with when the person whose job it was to ensure it was doesn't believe it is so much so that he resigned? Cabinet Secretary. 
I'm grateful to Mr. Sarwa for that uh, supplementary, for that additional question. There are undoubtedly challenges for NHS Tayside. I would not underestimate those uh, in any respect. There are challenges across our health service. We've rehearsed some of them in this chamber before and undoubtedly will rehearse some of them again. I take all concerns that are raised with me directly or by any other means very seriously indeed. In the specific instance that uh, Mr. Sawar uh, quotes in terms of the uh, junior doctor, the ex-doctor in training raising those issues, the appropriate place for the whistleblowing champion to raise those matters is indeed in the staff governance uh, committee and not in the wider public board meeting. Um, and that was why it was not appropriate to raise it in that public forum when you're talking about individuals uh, in, that, in those circumstances. The GMC report on the quality of uh, junior doctor training in mental health services will be at the next staff governance committee for NHS Tayside and the specific allegations that were reported via that whistleblowing are currently under investigation. And this chamber should rest assured, and I will give them my absolute assurance, that I will continue to monitor how these matters progress. But it is on the basis of the board responding appropriately, in my opinion, to what the whistleblowing uh, issues have been raised with them, that I have the assurance that they are being dealt with. And I will continue to monitor how the board deals with those and what end results there will be. And I'm happy to continue to advise uh, colleagues across this chamber of progress as it is made. Alison Johnson to be followed by <coughs> Alex Cole Hamilton. Alison Johnson. Thank you. Um, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of her statement, and I'd also like to put on record my thanks to staff in NHS Tayside for all they do. In its report on NHS governance, this Parliament's Health and Sport Committee recommended that there should be staff involvement in the process of appointing whistleblowing championships for boards, and the Cabinet Secretary's response to the report mentions, mentions a consultation on new whistleblowing standards. How will those standards address the situation the whistleblowing champion in NHS Tayside has found themselves in, concerns being escalated but not clearly being acted upon, and how will these standards set out standards for staff involvement? Also in that response, the Cabinet Secretary noted that legislation would be introduced in the autumn to establish an independent national whistleblowing officer for NHS Scotland to go live by the end of September 2019. Is this still on track? Is this time frame acceptable? What can be done to expedite this and support whistleblowers further now? Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. Thank you very much. Thank you to Ms Johnson for her questions and uh, to her too for her support for NHS uh, staff in Tayside. In terms of um, the involvement of staff, uh, of course, uh, this board, as with other boards, uh, has a partnership forum which directly involves uh, representatives of staff from across the board and matters that go to the board are discussed in that partnership forum and the partnership forum is itself represented through the employee director who sits on the board. Um, I, I understand that from the information that members have um, in terms of Mr uh, Hussein's uh, letter, if they have sight of that uh, to me, or uh, the media coverage in the Sunday Post um, just this past Sunday, um, that there is a claim that uh, whistleblowing concerns were um, escalated but not clearly acted upon. Uh, from the information that I have received from the board and part of which I have made available today to Mr. Hussein, I'm, uh, to Mr. Sawa. I'm perfectly willing to uh, make the, that available more widely to other members about how the board is dealing with this. I do not share the view that these uh, uh, whistleblowing uh, issues uh, have been escalated but not acted upon. Uh, that is precisely what I seek assurance on, that not only have they been escalated, but that they are being acted upon. I believe I have that assurance. I have already stated that I will continue to uh, keep a close eye on how these matters progress as the board goes through its proper processes. And as I have said, I'm very content to keep members uh, up to date with that progress as it is made. In terms of the um, other uh, matter that Ms. Johnson raised about whether or not we are on track, we are on track uh, in uh, regard to that appointment and to that timescale. 
Alex Cole Hamilton to be followed by Emma Harper. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement. I'm going to depart from my prepared question based on the revelations placed before Parliament by Anas Sarwar. On something this serious, on a failure of whistleblowing systems this serious, can we really expect the Board to mark its own homework on this? As such, does she agree with me it's time to bring, and it's in our national interest to bring this into the light, and will she today instruct a full, independent public inquiry into whistleblowing practices in North Tayside? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I assume Mr. Cole Hamilton wants the independent inquiry into the whole of Tayside and not just one bit of it, and I do not believe that is necessary. We have a very serious set of claims by uh, a member of uh, NHS Tayside's board, uh, which was communicated to me uh, by, a, an, by an email on the 3rd of September. That member then in indicated his intention to resign following his current period of ill health absence uh, on the 11th of September. The board has acted on those concerns. Uh, I have, as I've said, uh, seen the actions that they have taken prior to Mr Hussein uh, being in touch with me, uh, and I have made a commitment that I will keep a very close eye on how that, those matters progress and will keep this chamber up to date on that. The board is absolutely not marking its own homework. Do you know, I understand members' concern about this, and I share it, but I do think that we need to be very careful here of the language that we use. I've already advised that Tayside itself has asked the Royal College of Physicians in London to commission to undertake a review in terms of dosage matters. The GMC will be involved in terms of the allegation of doctors in training, the single doctor that raised that issue via that whistleblowing matter. In terms of uh, the issue around uh, senior management pay and the public reporting of pay and expenses, uh, a paper is going to the board in, in October that proposes that not only do they publish uh, those pay scales, but they also publish expenses. There are a number of other matters, CAMS, the issue on CAMS was precisely issues that have been discussed across this chamber many on many occasions on which members are acting, this government is acting and the board itself is acting. So I refute the notion that this board, or indeed any other board, on matters as serious as this, is marking its own homework. That is absolutely not the case. And I will, as I've already committed, return to members via another statement, if that is what they wish, or by other means, keeping them updated of the progress of these specific issues that have been raised, but within the wider context of the significant steps that both the acting chair and the acting chief executive are taking with senior staff and others in Tayside to improve the scrutiny, the challenge and the governance of that board. Emma Harper to be followed by Liz Smith. Emma Harper. Thank you, President Officer. Given the importance of the role of non-executive board members, how can health boards and the Scottish Government ensure that people with the right skills are recruited to these posts? Cabinet Secretary. Thank Ms Harper for that question. The way in which we go about recruiting non-executive members to these posts, indeed, uh, to other important posts in other public bodies. In the, in the health service, we use what we describe as value-based recruitment. The intention behind that is to try, in the process of a recruitment exercise, to um, allow an individual who is applying to display more than one dimension of their capability and capacity. In other words, to look at the values that they bring as well as their experience of particular tasks. Non-executive board members in our health service are of absolutely critical importance. There are issues uh, here in Tayside, but we can see them more, more widely afield elsewhere in the UK, where the absence of effective scrutiny and challenge by non-executive members in boards leads to poor decisions being made, uh, at the very least. So it is important that non-executive board members not only understand the information that they're being given, that they are given the right information that allows them to exercise that function, but that in challenging, they pursue their challenges. Uh, and so the recruitment process that we now have in place, I believe, will offer us the opportunity to have an even more robust uh, 
view of the individuals who are coming forward to what is a very responsible role uh, and one uh, where we absolutely need uh, a lot of their time, a lot of their energy and a lot of their expertise. And that is the way by which we uh, inter recruit, uh, interview, uh, select and determine the role of our non-executive mem board members. But there is one final uh, step that is very important for chairs to take and that is the annual review of how individual board members are performing in that role. Uh, that review is quite robust. We have a further discussion coming up this Monday between myself and the chairs of all our boards about how we can ensure that that is consistently applied across all the boards because that goes to inform any future appointment of a member uh, to the health board concerned or to any other board in the health service. Liz Smith to be followed by Louise MacDonald. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, you mentioned earlier that on the 27th of June, um, in an answer to an earlier question, uh, that was when uh, you received first information about this, or the Scottish Government did. Could I just confirm whether that was the previous uh, Health Secretary who received that information, or whether it was you yourself? Cabinet Secretary. I, I think what Ms Smith is referring to is a point that uh, Mr Sarwar made, and that is... Uh, when Mr Hussein says he raised this matter um, uh, in terms of the board. Uh, in terms of being in touch with me, uh, his letter to me is dated the 31st of August. He sent it to me by email on the 3rd of September. And that is the first point that I was aware of, the specific concerns that he was raising. At that point, on the uh, 3rd of September, when he sent me that letter, he was raising those matters with me and asking for what he described as a period of special leave because of his health. Um, there is no such thing as special leave, but he was advised uh, to seek uh, his uh, GP's uh, involvement in that. He has since then been on uh, sick leave, but on the 11th of September, he intimated his intention to resign when his period of sick leave is over. Louise MacDonald to be followed by Sandra White. Thank you very much. Members have referred to the Health and Sports Committee uh, report on the governance of the NHS in Scotland, which, among other things, highlights the importance of monitoring and assessing whether changes in support for those whistleblowing in NHS bodies, uh, whether those changes are effective. I note also from the Cabinet Secretary's response that there's no intention to hold the uh, Dignity at Work survey in 2018, which is one of the means by which the NHS is able to assess uh, staff views of uh, support that is available to them. Uh, what else does she have in mind in order to ensure that staff who find themselves in a position where they feel bullied or harassed or under pressure as a consequence of whistleblowing or other issues, uh, uh, how is that going to be monitored? Cabinet Secretary. Um, uh, I'm grateful to uh, Mr MacDonald for raising that and indeed to the committee for its governance report, which I have read in great detail and we have responded to. Uh, and I believe I'm uh, due to meet the committee uh, myself to go through some of those matters in some detail because it, it is a very important uh, series of issues that are being raised and further steps that we might take. In terms of the Dignity at Work survey, um, I believe that we have already um, dealt with that in this chamber in terms of the, uh, uh, the level of response to that, the I Matter survey where NHS Tayside is more than comparable with uh, the health service uh, across the piece in terms of staff responses at around about 63 to 65% rate uh, of response or engagement from uh, NHS uh, staff in Tayside with a number of areas uh, where uh, in terms of the overall grid about how you rate, uh, how people view uh, their position, uh, uh, NHS Tayside is doing uh, at the top level in some of those areas. But there are other areas where it needs to improve. Um, and the uh, Staff Governance Committee uh, and the Partnership Forum in NHS Tayside should be actively engaged in looking at those areas in terms of how they, in, they uh, look to improve that, in particular the areas that Mr MacDonald has raised. As members will know, uh, each board is subject to an annual ministerial review on its performance uh, and this year in terms of NHS Tayside I will be conducting that review personally and this is one of the areas that I will be looking to see what progress they've made uh, and how 
that uh, is received by staff when I meet at both the clinical forum and the partnership forum when I'm at NHS Tayside for that review. Sandra White to be followed by Bill Bowen. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. I haven't caught sight of any emails that Anna Sarwa had or anyone else, uh, but I do note the mention of openness and honesty and the whistleblowing in the opening statement from the Cabinet Secretary. And I just wondered, with dignity at work and, and other areas which we have mentioned in the Health Committee, can the Cabinet Secretary expand on exactly what will happen regarding whistleblowing and the honesty and the openness which has been put forward to ensure that it really is a safe and acceptable for staff to speak out about uh, in, in confidence particularly uh, of any areas they think should be highlighted? Cabinet Secretary. <clears throat> well, as I indicated in my statement, um, the, uh, there is a new uh, whistleblowing champion at board level uh, in NHS Tayside, and we've already covered uh, the other uh, initiatives that are taking in terms of uh, national whist whistleblowing. But I do want to put on record this, and that is in terms of NHS Tayside, what I said in my statement um, stands and deserves, some, um, deserves repetition. And that is that what we are looking to do in NHS Tayside is secure significant cultural and structural reform. And that cultural reform is critical in any board, and I will be looking across all the boards to ensure that they are uh, behaving in a manner that I believe is appropriate in terms of uh, how they engage with staff, how they involve, with, involve staff, how uh, welcoming they make it for staff at any level and any part of a health board's operation to raise concerns that they have and to have confidence that those concerns will be listened to seriously, will be acted on, and they will be advised as to what has happened. Now, in some instances, there will be concerns raised that prove to be uh, ill-founded, not raised uh, in a malicious way, but simply when the facts are looked at, then there is no particular foundation for them. But nonetheless, if a member of staff has a, a view that something is of concern, then it should be uh, treated very seriously. So all of those matters will be looked at. We will look across the other boards to ensure that they are operating in the manner that uh, I believe is essential for them to actively and fully make best use of that most significant resource that they have, which is our staff who work in the health service. And every single one of the ministerial reviews of boards that will be conducted uh, by myself and my two ministerial colleagues for this year will focus on that as well as on a range of other matters. Bill Bowman to be followed by David Torres. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Cabinet Secretary, last year it was revealed that NHS Tayside had a severe problem with workplace bullying. Respondents to a questionnaire highlighted that they did not trust their managers enough to tell them. Now this current whistleblower development, and it's been quite a shocking list to hear today, also involves a lack of trust in management's capability to take things seriously. The actions you, you've spoken about um, in terms of NHS boards overall uh, are one thing, but the NHS Tayside's actions have not worked out so far for the staff there. What will you do specifically for NHS Tayside staff who are obviously very mistrusting of the management to stop this thing happening again? Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. Um, I'm grateful to Mr. Bowman for raising that. Um, and he raises a very serious matter, which is um, where NHS staff, or staff in any organisation, but from my point of view, NHS staff, raise uh, concerns and say that they do not trust their management to take their concerns seriously, or they fear that in raising concerns, then in some way um, there may be some uh, repercussion on them for doing so. Uh, in addition to the steps that I have outlined today, then when I undertake the ministerial review of NHS Tayside, I will make a particular point. In normal practice, these ministerial reviews um, for Mr. Bowman and others involves meeting the clinical forum, which is a mix of uh, clinical staff of all grades about uh, how they feel matters are uh, being pursued within their health board, meeting the partnership uh, forum, which involves, as I said, unions and others representing staff, RCN and others representing staff. But in this particular instance, I will make a particular point of also uh, seeking a way by which I can have a wider discussion with staff in NHS Tayside around some of these particular matters, and that I will do that 
um, without the benefit of NHS board officials beside me, um, but obviously with my own officials there with me, in order to see if I can get, if you like, under the skin of what uh, some of this is about, uh, so that we can then be assured or otherwise take other steps if needed uh, in terms of how the new leadership, the current leadership of NHS Tayside is addressing these matters and taking them forward. David Torrance to be followed by Jenny Marrow. Can the Cabinet Secretary give assurances that all staff at NHS Tayside will continue to be kept informed of any developments? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I believe I can, um, with the, the uh, knowledge that I have. I know that, for example, uh, the current chair, acting chair, John Brown, uh, regularly issues staff notices to keep uh, members appraised uh, of what is happening, including uh, a very recent notice, I believe, was issued either yesterday or the day before uh, with respect to these board resignations and giving staff assurance that the matters that were raised by Mr Hussain are being dealt with. Uh, and looked at in detail by uh, his chief executive and that senior team, uh, and also giving uh, assurance more widely to a wider community that nonetheless, with those resignations, the board is still able to meet its core statutory responsibilities and its responsibilities more widely in terms of integration of health and social care. And Jenny Mara. In her response to Miles Briggs, the Cabinet Secretary made reference to an issue of dosage that is being reviewed. Can she provide the Chamber with details on the conditions that that dosage review pertains to? She also outlined um, in the same response some details around the appointment process of a new Chief Executive, but I'm looking for confirmation that the recruitment process has started because we need a stable and seamless transition in December for the long term. And, presiding officer, can the Cabinet Secretary give her views on the forecast outturn of an 18.7 million deficit this year in Tayside, taking the Tayside's debt to the government to nearly £65 million? How does she plan to get on top of this and give patients in Tayside the confidence that this financial mess is being sorted out? Cabinet Secretary. Thank you very much. There's uh, a lot of um, questions there, Cabinet Secretary, perhaps... Um, don't go into too much detail in all of them. There's too many questions for the end of the statement. Cabinet Secretary. Thank you very much, President Officer. I'll do my best. In terms of the dosage review and the specific conditions, I do not have that information before me. I'm quite happy to seek that information and will advise Ms Mara of that in due course. In terms of the uh, process for recruiting the Chief Executive, um, the uh, preliminary process has begun. Uh, it is unlikely, uh, even if we had started that in August or earlier, that we would have a chief executive in post in time because these matters take some time to go through. And generally speaking, if you're looking for high quality leaders, they will have another role that they are leaving and you have to negotiate uh, their leaving period. But uh, I am pleased that Mr. Brown has agreed to continue as the acting chair uh, until the new chief executive uh, is in post, uh, I would hope in the early part of 2019 and of course we will also begin a process to uh, recruit a permanent chair uh, for the four-year period to uh, NHS Tayside uh, and on the the final point in terms of the finances of course um, we take uh, active engagement with our boards across the financial year in terms of their financial position what I've said to all boards I've made it very clear that in looking to uh, address their financial challenges uh, we need to be assured that they are making best use of those resources, but what will not be acceptable is where they take capacity out of their health board in terms of delivery uh, because of the knock-on impact that has directly to patients. Um, my uh, chief finance officer in uh, the directorate and in the health service is actively engaged with NHS Tayside and his board. Uh, as members here will recall, of course, NHS Tayside is at the highest escalation level uh, for health boards in Scotland and that therefore means that there is detailed and uh, rigorous reporting and scrutiny of all the decisions that they're making, and in particular in this instance of the decisions on finance. Thank you very much. And that concludes our statement. We're going to move on to a debate on violence reduction. We'll just take a few moments for the members and ministers to change seats. <laughs>